For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, I'm Thomas Anderson. Like many of you, I work with computers. I like the freedom I feel outside the limitations of the real world. But computers are also mirrors, reflecting back who and what we are and the choices we make, the worlds we build. They also confront us with questions about why we want to choose this over that, why we want to make X instead of Y, where do ideas of who we are and what we want even come from? You take the red pill, and I show you how deep the rabbit hole goes. This isn't real. What is real? How do you define real? For instance, I'm not even sure why I'm here. I remember waking up and thinking that I'm supposed to come here, that it was important for me to ask people. How do we know what is real? Hi, I'm Keanu Reeves. Over 20 years ago, I first played the character Thomas Anderson in the Matrix trilogy. Those films pioneered digital cinema with shots like bullet time. Back then, we talked a lot about where the digital age might take cinema and narrative. In an industry where actors have tried to remain perpetually young, we wondered about digital faces that could become immortal. Hi, I'm Carrie Ann Moss, and I played Trinity in the Matrix films. 20 years ago, we asked ourselves how long it would be before faces and bodies could be changed as easily as we change clothes. We wondered, what would identity mean in a completely digital world? And what would reality mean when a world we can build feels as real as our own? Let's talk about Omniverse. The internet changed everything. It's surely an understatement. We are always connected now. The internet is essentially a digital overlay on the world. The overlay is largely 2D information. Text, voice, images, video. But that's about to change. We now have the technology to create new 3D virtual worlds or model our physical world. These virtual worlds will obey the laws of physics or not. There could be AI or friends with you. We will jump from one world to another, like we do on the web with hypertext. Nanobots, these blood cell sized devices, will be going in our bodies. Uh, we'll have some go inside our brains through the capillaries, non invasively. They'll be interacting with our biological neurons. So they'll put our brains on the internet. And they'll also enable us to enter a virtual reality environment from within the nervous system. So if I want to go in a virtual reality environment, the nanobots will shut down the signals coming from my real eyes and my real skin and create the signals that would be appropriate for the virtual environment. And then it'll feel like I'm in that environment. Omniverse is very different than a game engine. Omniverse is designed to be data center scale. These are some of the basic concepts for the metaverse. And, and while this may sound like science fiction, we're starting to see a lot of these technologies coming together. Portal of Omniverse is USD, Universal Scene Description, essentially a digital wormhole that connects people and computers to Omniverse, and for one Omniverse world to connect to another. USD is to Omniverse what HTML is to websites. Omniverse is futuristic. Imagine a space where you can tune out distractions and focus on the task at hand. And when you're ready to share what you've been working on, you can present it as if you're right there with the team. The fourth industrial revolution, it's a fusion of the physical, the digital, and the biological world. It's changing not only what we are doing, it's changing who we are. The difference of this first uh, industrial revolution is it doesn't change what you are doing. It changes you. If you take a genetic editing, right. uh, just as an example, 
it's you who exactly. are changed yeah. and it's you who exactly. are changed yeah. and of yeah. course this has a big impact on yeah. your identity yeah. the fourth industrial revolution will impact our lives completely it will not only change how we communicate how we produce how we consume it will change actually us our own identity our own identity what we will see is that uh, everything will be integrated into a ecosystem driven by big data and uh, it's not just a digital revolution, it's digital, of course physical, it's nanotechnology, but it's also biological. My question is to you today, who are you? Who are you today? And how do I know who you are? And how do you know who you are? Are you walking out who you're supposed to be? And who are you supposed to be? I believe each one of us here today know what to do in the world. We understand what it means to thrive in this world. We know that we got to dress like they do. We know that we got to talk like they do. We know that we got to act like they do and go to the parties that they do. We got to drink like they do. We got to smoke like they do. We know how to do it very well, but deep inside we're not satisfied because that's not who we were called to be. We were not called to be weed smokers. We were not called to be uh, drinkers. We were not called to be cocaine addicts. We were not called to be prostitutes. We were not called to be womanizers and adulterers and, and, and all of the bad stuff. But that's what we're good at. And that's what we always default to in the end of the day. You see, Christ sees the big picture but we see in part and that's why every day we walk we do stupid things we don't show up to church thinking we can do it on our own but then a year later we find ourselves deep into some sin and then we realize how much we need the church we end up running and to and fro and doing great and mighty things for God but we forget prayer we forget staying in the word we forget that it depends upon connecting with the vine and we fall down on our face because we don't know who we are. We don't know how to connect into who we are. We don't even know Jesus fully. Sometimes when I pray, I say, Lord, I want to know you. Because I know if I get to know God, I can also know myself. Because I don't know myself fully. I used to think that I wouldn't make certain mistakes. But then as time went on and as temptations came, I fell into the same thing that I thought I was overcoming. I didn't know who I was and why was it that I did what I did? Why was it that I went where I went? Why was it that I touched what I touched? Why was it that I looked at what I looked at? It's because I didn't understand my identity. I didn't know. And that's why most of us live in sin. We don't know what we have in Jesus. We don't know what we could have in Jesus. We don't know what the kingdom of God has in store. The Bible actually says, eye has not seen or ear has not heard what God has in store for us. I'm here to tell you today that God's goodness is amazing. God has all authority in heaven on earth. That means every single thing is in his hands, in his fingertips. God defies the laws of gravity. He can turn things around in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye. God can change your circumstances. He can heal your marriage. He can heal your disease. Jesus can do it. Born again by the grace of God. And it's a wonderful sight to see. Father, I pray now that you'd anoint the messenger as this holy word goes forth. And it will not return into you void, but it will accomplish that which you please. It will prosper in the thing until you've sent it. Jesus Christ is the Lord of glory and that his way is right. Listen, it's coming a day when that kind of spirit is going to rule. But he, being full of the Holy Ghost, looked up steadfastly into heaven and saw the glory of God, and Jesus standing on the right hand of God, and said, Behold, I see the heavens opened, and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. All things by necessity must work together for good. The purpose of humanity is to fear God and to keep His commandments. It will be a glorious day when we all get to heaven. When we all get to heaven. Calling upon God and saying, 
Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. If you're born again, let the spirit of life which of Christ Jesus dwell in you. Let that power dwell in you. Rejoice in your victory. Rejoice in Christ. Shout hallelujah. Praise God. When we see 